FLR as a concept, as a you know what it's become uh, now, uh, there's quite little um, sort of solid research on that topic. So, so what we wanted to do was to look at the broader literature on you know including literature on Red Plus and other initiatives, for example, and to really look at what are some of the you know key some of the entry points for gender analysis when it comes to when it comes to FLR. So, what are some of the key risks? Uh, to women's rights. What are some of the possible synergies between uh, various restoration goals and uh, gender equality? Uh, and as well as perhaps what are some of the trade-offs and how they can be uh, reconciled. A big issue is, is around land tenure. Uh, so on, on, you know, on what land uh, is restoration taking place? In areas where women don't have land titles are not necessarily included as stakeholders in the FLR process at all. Um, and from the red literature we know that um, there's a correlation between women's lack of participation in the design process of these initiatives and the well-being outcomes. In many countries, you know, or many contexts, you have women planting trees, uh, you have women nursing the seedlings, but in 20 years time, uh, in 20 years time it might be that the that the benefits they're not able to reap the benefits and we had a good you know a very sort of telling example of, uh, of this uh, we heard during the workshop in Nairobi uh, a few weeks ago where um, uh, Janet Chihanga from the Komaza Foundation uh, who had been working with uh, women on the coast of Kenya to um, to restore degraded lands and plant trees in those degraded lands that weren't really claimed by anyone. Um, and uh, some eight, eight years later, when it wasn't even time for, uh, for harvesting, but just thinning, the men who showed no interest in the land, uh, which the women have been working on for all this time, and now they show up and claim the land uh, because you have the trees there. I think what's really important is to look at what is actually happening on the ground. I think that is really, that is, the, that is what needs to inform this discussion. So it is a long process and it will require, you know, everything from, from uh, policy to addressing issues uh, that have to do with uh, implementation of those policies uh, to changing and transforming norms on the ground. And you know, so that'll that'll of course require the collaboration of a lot of different uh, partners, and and it, it's nothing that will happen necessarily overnight. But I think in the short term, with restoration uh, initiatives, some of the really critical things uh, are of course to implement to ensure that there are, you know that principle of uh, FPIC or free prior informed consent uh, are upheld uh, and, and implemented in a gender responsive way. When we look at FLR and gender, because there are so many different stakeholders involved, because there are so many different approaches, uh, it's very difficult to sort of make a broad statement about what needs to be done. But I think one of the reasons for me personally why I am engaged in this or want to be engaged in this is, is because this is really an opportunity to, to bring these up uh, to the forefront of these discussions. You know, now there is a lot of focus, there's a lot of political sort of emphasis on these areas, on these, you know, these lands, these areas that have been, you know, not necessarily the priority of a lot of policymakers for a long time. Now all of a sudden, you know, there's more and more emphasis on these areas. And so bring in the issue of rights, bring in the issues of gender equality uh, into that discussion is really critical and it's a good opportunity to to do that now.